Peace was going down. It's DJ Payne One right here with BeatStars.com and the man himself, Cash Money AP. What's Always up? good to see you. Much, much congratulations are in order for your continued success, Appreciate especially over the last year. Things have just been crazy for you. Appreciate it. Honestly, you're probably the most well-recognized uh, producer from the online beat licensing world. How did you even first start uploading beats? Um, I was just doing like my thing, you know, making beats at home and shit. And I was like, then I should just like start dropping music on, on YouTube. And then I started and I was still in school. So I was like, I don't really care about doing numbers. I just wanted to get my music heard. And then one day, you know, the more beats I was uploading, the more like uh, feedbacks I was getting. And I was always like uh, interacting with my uh, followers. So that's how like people start liking me. And then I have my own style too. So it was like a huge like impact on those. I mean, like the, the fact that I was replying to everybody and be like, so, so like, uh, uh, I can't find a word. So uh, the interaction was so crazy that they, they weren't used to that. They were just like, people who are usually like, oh, they just drop music and then hope I like, I, st I stop like, uh, I close my windows and it's good. But I was like taking my time to reply to everybody. And that's how, that's, I think that's why they start liking me and then following me and all this stuff. Yeah, and I, I remember at South By on the panel, you said that when you first started uploading beats, that was that was it for you. You you had no social life. Mm -hmm. you, I think you quit playing sports, right? Yeah, just all beats. Yeah. Okay, so that's so a I lot. Of, a little bit fat. <laughs> that's a lot of dedication, though, especially at a young age. Because how how young were you? You were a teenager then. Right? Uh, start making beats. I was 15. I dropped out of school on my, on my third years of college. But before that, I didn't have any social life. It was just like going to school, going home, doing homework, making music. Yeah. It, it's cool that you're being honest about that because I think a lot of people look at producers and think it's one big party. And for you, the reality is it's studio work, and that's how you make so many. Yeah, because at first views. I was like making music, but I wasn't really making money of it. So school was like the first priority. And then I started like uploading my beats on YouTube and then I started making money then one day I was like mom I'm gonna quit and she was like okay I support you and yeah that was it oh that's a dope story too that, that your mother um, did support you yeah. and you upload I mean to this day in spite of you being really the next super producer I was talking with Dream Life about this earlier he said you know Cash Money AP is the next super producer probably we should and it's, it, with all that workload and with all, all of that um all that attention that comes with that, you're still dropping pretty consistently one beat every day. Yeah. Yeah, I like, I just like working with like upcoming people, like all those people like uh, Los Skies, Smokey Margiela, um, Designer, they all went like one day on my YouTube channel and like got a beat. That's how I first met them because they were using my YouTube beats. So I really like, you know, the upcoming rappers, they're not gonna like hit up like a Metro, like a Zetoven for a beat. They're just gonna go on YouTube and like rip a beat. Then I don't really care if they rip my beat because it's like starting, kind of starting a relationship with them. Then like, oh yeah, I'm a fan of your beats, bro. And then when I meet them, it's like, oh yeah, bro, I'm, so, I'm a fan. Let's keep working, you know? And I don't even, I never met those people before. So it's like, it's like cool. Yeah, I wanna, let me talk to you about that because I'm gonna switch to another question that I had that was related to that. Um, a lot of rappers that were buzzing were using your beats early on. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly thought you were based in the United States when I first started hearing your tag because so many, especially in Chicago, so many Chicago yeah. rappers were using your, your tracks. First. What was your first major placement, your official first major placement? Official first was Soldier Boy in 2012. That was uh, in May. And that was a song where like, I made a beat with one of his producers at the time. And the song was called My Chains. Okay. And I was yeah. like, whoa. And then one month after that, I had a song on uh, Chief Keef Bang 2 uh, mixtape. And yeah, then I, I had like a, a lot of songs with him too, but you know, he, he had the story where he got his hard drive stolen, like he lost it, and then we lost all the songs. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah you, so, so you've developed a lot of relationships with a lot of Chicago artists. Why do you think they gravitated to your production so much? Cause I had a song like I used to. I started the futuristic type shit in mm. Chicago, like you know all the the like melodies, and there was like something called the bop. Yep. You remember the bop? Oh yeah. I used to make those kind of beats too. 
Oh, that's right. So they liked it. I, I start like from the bottom, like Chicago, I went to like with the smallest artist because it's like a circle. They all know each other. So my name like keep like going up, going up. So at the end of the day, they start eating me up, Lil Durk, Chief Keef, G Herbo, Lil Baby. And yeah, that's how I started. Like go, go small, go like, go like small and then we get big. Okay, so back to your insane work ethic. You make something like, well, I've seen you make 12 beats in one session, not even in a day, in a, in a session. What gets you in the zone mentally to have that kind of output consistently? I just want to get to the top. I, and then, yeah, I got so many people asking for beats and I don't want to send them like the same beats over and over. Like, I feel like I work with YG, so having like YG on the beat, and then I work with like some creep people, and I ha having them on the same beats, like, I can't do that. So that's why I make a lot, a lot of beats. Yeah, like if I don't make like five beats, at least five beats a day, I'm, I don't feel good. You can ask like my, my girl, I, I don't feel good. I'm I should like, be interviewing her, honestly. <laughs> I'm like. Because a lot of producers, I, I won't get into it. Our personal lives are compromised and yeah. impeded by a, the output that, that we, you know, we put so much pressure on ourselves a lot of the time. So that's crazy to hear. Um, would you let, let's say you had to start from zero let's say you were just starting to make beats and uploading them today would your process be the same i think it would be the same because nobody would try to like would do what i'm doing right now like as far as like dropping free beats i'm pretty sure nobody would have done that if i didn't start it first so i would keep doing the same thing and network with people yeah. so every day dropping free beats that's yeah, the no, strategy i wouldn't think every day though because when I first started, I was shopping like maybe three times a week. I just drop it every day because I have like so many subscribers and I want to like keep going up. You know, I don't want them to like get tired of me. Mm. So that's how I do it. So to pick up what you were saying earlier about your strategy of, of giving out free beats, obviously, as you said, that was something that you feel was central to your success. And you told uh, Cato when you did a, a Music Entrepreneur Club interview that you made six figures off of releasing freebies. How did that? How did that work? Like, um, like freebies is just like a, a non-profit. Like a non-profit. Yeah, if you want to just like use the beat, like just to listen to in your car. Yeah, you can just get like the free download. But to get the free download, you have to follow me either like on Twitter, on SoundCloud, or just like subscribe to my YouTube channel. So that was like, it's like they win like a freebie and then I win like a follow. So that's why like all my socials are like going up because I stuff as I first started with my SoundCloud I had like probably like 5,000 before I start with a B-Star feature now I got like 40,000 my Twitter got like a hundred thousand followers like just doing that like dropping a freebie make them follow me on, on social medias yeah so so with B-Stars yeah you can you can um, uh, give away a free download in exchange for a yeah. social follow do you switch your social follows on B-Stars a lot no, really, I just like wanted to get my SoundCloud to a certain point, like 10, 20, 30. But then after I stopped doing the SoundCloud, it kept going up. Like people were just following me. And then my, I, I started doing it from my Twitter like six months ago. Then, you know, Twitter, I get like an average, like 100 people following me every day from like those things, I think. Yeah, your Twitter is your Twitter's going crazy. I know before you started uh, working with BeatStars, you were selling beats directly through email, right? No, I was, I, was, I was using SoundClick. Oh, you were using SoundClick. And it was, the system was so trash because you had to send the beats by yourself every time you sell a beat. So imagine I'm like in school and then somebody hit me up, yo, I need the beat yeah, as soon as possible. I'm like, I'm in school. And then where I used to leave the Wi-Fi, the internet wasn't that, that fast. So every time to send like a, like I would say like a wave lease, it's gonna take me like an hour to send like 16 megabytes. It's like. Yeah. So when did you actually join BeatStars? I joined BeatStars in October 2016. Yeah, I remember Abe sent me an email saying that, oh, you should check out my uh, platform, saying Beats, and then he explained me how it works. Because, you know, the language was like a barrier, like... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I was like, every time I see something that is like uh, hard to, to read, or like I don't know the words, I'm not going to like check it out. So he explained me everything through Skype, and then it was like easier for me to get yeah, autom automation. I can't imagine. Yeah, exactly. In school, trying to balance all the inquiries, and because you had a lot of interest even back then, so that so that streamlined the process. Um, a lot of people 
draw a line between the internet and the industry. I think you're one of the, the people that's, that's erasing that line. And you had a great year. Congratulations last Thanks. year. It was amazing. Um, you, you were, you've been in Forbes magazine recently. Yeah. And Thanks. you also in 2017 signed with Steven Victor. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me about that deal? So Steven is my manager now. I signed a, a management contract with him. And then I signed a publishing deal with Universal on March 2017. He is the one that made me sign with them, by the way. And then since since that we've been working. Yeah, Steven is like a really nice person, very humble. Yeah, always like down to help. With the Universal deal, has that gotten you more opportunities to work with artists directly? Recently, yeah. They put me in studio with people, like some writers, rappers. Like I go in camp. Yeah, dope. Nice, nice, nice. Um, Cash Money AP is a brand that so many people expect, respect and you, I think you're one of this generation's most prolific and recognizable producers but Appreciate. you're also really accessible. I mean you're on social media, you talk to people, like you said at the beginning you responded to every single mm -hmm. YouTube comment and it seems like you've still carried on that, that mentality. I mean, even here, we're at A3C right now, and, and everywhere you walk, someone wants to talk to you. And I see you talking to everybody, interacting with everybody. Why is, why is being accessible to the people still so important for you? Yeah, because I'm nothing, bro. We still, I'm human. It's like everybody, like, we, you're born, like, the same way, and you die alone. So I'm like, I'm like, fame or nothing is going to change that. It's like, we're the same. Like, if you want, like, advice from me, just come talk to me. I'm going to, like, help you. Like, yeah, it's like we're the same. And I don't feel like I need to be like different with other people. Yeah. And I came from like a, like a poor background. So, you know, I know how it is. So I understand when people like need help. And I'm, I'm always down to like help. So moving forward, I mean, your style is undeniably yours. You have a musical style that's unique. You have a, a sonic style with your mixing that's unique. In the future, do you see yourself producing other genres, maybe pop or neo soul, or anything like that? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe pop, because it's like kind of like similar to like the hip hop scene, like when it comes to like melodies. Because I, I make like melodic type stuff, but I will have to like change my drums because I'll be using like some hard ass drums. Yeah. <laughs> Or you, you might just change the pop genre completely. Exactly, exactly. So that's your plan. All right, you heard it first. All right, how can people find you? What's the best way for them to get in touch? Oh, you can follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, at Cash Money AP. And then, yeah, don't spam me, though. <laughs> All right, man, much continued success. Thank you. Thank you once again. Appreciate it.